How you going? Uh, I've got a problem. Maybe you'll start to work out what sort of problem I've got when you see what I'm piling up here. These are the things I'm going to need in this problem, and it's actually quite a large problem. That might help me. That might definitely help me. Even something like that might help me with this problem. I know a finger pointing like that is going to help, but I'm pretty sure a rubber chicken isn't going to help at all. Warning. The warning on this video has been removed, and this video is highly educational. Mind you, there would be some people who'd say the rubber chicken is the most useful thing in that pile of stuff. Let me show you my problem. Okay, there's actually a very nasty spider problem going on down in this area. It's quite intense, and luckily my son has got some very good spider eyes, and he saw things that I didn't see. Now, I'm just going to drag the camera through here uh, without lighting this up properly, and I'm just going to let you see how difficult it is to see uh, what's going on web-wise. Okay, can you see much spider activity going on there? If I dump the stupid rubber chicken and bring in a light, maybe we'll see stuff. This is an LED work light. I just hope we're not getting strobies. Uh, tricky things to deal with at the best of times. Okay, let's take a look down there. And what's going to help tell the story more is a little work light in there like that. Okay, I hope it's in focus there. There's a stack of web there. It could be redback spider, it could be that grey widow, or as I call it, cement spider. Uh, whatever it is, it looks a little bit nasty. So that was that gap down there, but when we track across here a bit, we see something a little bit more sinister. And if I track up here, I believe that would be a spider nest up there. And I think uh, that's a very young praying mantis caught up in that web. It's all very spiderific. There's a stack of activity between the tubs as well. And if I come along here and if I tilt the camera like this and go in a bit like this, I'm hoping to point out a drop down line. If I've got my little finger here, I can just tease it there. Okay, I don't like the look at that drop down line at all. It is just on the end of that finger there. Hope you can see it. There's actually a stack of activity. Let me grab that torch again and I'll just show you some more areas in this zone. Up between the tub and the table, uh, there's more and more spider web. Like crikey's, uh, just as I was looking under the table there, a spider has appeared. It's actually not the sort of spider I expected to see. Oh my goodness me! The madness is gone! Oh, I can't believe it. That is just so scary to watch. It happened so fast, man. I'm, I'm glad I was on this side because oh, I was about to look at some other spider areas. That is just so sad, but the spider's got to feed. The spider's got to feed. Oh, my goodness. I would say it's a good nice sister for that mantis there, uh, that spider, and I'm not quite sure exactly what spider it is. It looks like a, a brown house spider to me. Although, I will be corrected, I dare say, but uh, there you go. There's one for the history books, A eh? Spider takes out mantis. I'd say the spider's got a bite in there. Uh, it is right at the end of our summer, literally the last days. So maybe someone would work that out by seeing a mantis of that size. Uh, but it's exciting. Man, that happened fast. It happened really fast. Always exciting to see the spiders in action. I can only think the spider is going to try and pull that mantis back to its home. Um, I'm thinking there's possibly multiple styles of spiders in this area now. And look, that's one of the friendly spiders in a sense. Uh, they're the ones you want around. But the problem is, I think there's other spiders here that I don't want around. And that's what I've got to deal with. I would definitely say that spider has got total control of that situation. Uh, there's no way the mantis is going to come back from that. I was half expecting to see another style of spider here as well. Uh, maybe I'm glad I'm not seeing that. And I'm really trying to work out what am I gonna, what am I gonna do here. I don't want the spider on this uh, chest, but I also wanna keep the spider around. Sort of funny, I actually brought some crickets with me this time to try and lure spiders out. I never thought I'd find something in the web that was gonna do it for me. I never thought it'd be a praying mantis, that's for sure. Man, look at that, it's just amazing. What am I going to do with this spider? I, I want to put it somewhere where it can continue on. I don't want to get rid of this one. It just reminded me one of the problems with insecticide. It takes out the good ones and the bad ones at the same time. I better try and capture this spider and basically give it a new home. I think that's the best thing I can do. My plan is to capture it with this cloth in a soft way. Like the way you sometimes capture a critter inside that you want to try and get outside. And then I'll take it over to the garden. So if I'm pretty fast here... I'll be able to get the spider plus the mantis. Okay, here we go. And hopefully... I've, yeah, I've got it. Okay, I'll get it over into the garden. Just somewhere here, uh, maybe on top of this box here. 
Okay, and hopefully we will see the spider there. There it goes. Okay, let the spider go onto a, a plant or something. Mind you, it's been a little bit uh, tricky to get to move on. Come on. Well, I'll just leave that there and it can sort itself out, hey? Okay, back to finding the other nastiest spiders, which I do believe are hanging around here. That was our friendly spider there. If I get my torch there, can we see what sort of home was going on there? Or oh, can't you see very much at all? Hmm. One thing I can't see is redbacks. So that there was a friendly spider. It was a bit different to a redback spider's web, but what I don't like going on here, it's a widowy type web here. It could be what I call a cement spider. If I take a look at all the nooks and crannies around here, maybe I'm going to see something. Okay, uh, search and you will find. I have found another spider. I think it's what I call a cement spider. Grey widow, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it's a redback. I'm going to try and tease a spider out to have a feed. I've got a cricket there on these, uh, well, surgical equipment. I don't know what they're really called. Now, if I put that there, it'll be into the web. Okay, and hopefully the cricket's going to play for me and we'll see the spider. Mind you, as I've seen in the past, crickets can be incredibly difficult to deal with. They don't want to play when you, when you want them to play. I want it to tease the web to entice the spider. There's never a guarantee it's ever going to work. It maybe needs to be paid more money. It's not doing very much moving. It's got to move to fool the spider. There's something in the web. Okay, the spider has come out. It is not a red back. It is one of those, I'm calling them cement spiders, grey, whatever you want to call it. Friendly or foe? Hmm. One thing I do like is when these guys are around, the red backs seem not to be around. Identifying spiders it can be extremely tricky, and also depending on where you are in the world, you may have a different name for a certain type of spider. I went to the Find a Spider Guide, and it's run by Dr. Ron Atkinson, and I do believe we're dealing with a grey house spider. His pictures on the website uh, certainly look like the spider that I've got here. And what is curious to me is the male version of this spider it looks very similar to an immature redback spider, so it'd be very easy to have this style of spider confused with a redback. The way these spiders make their webs and where these spiders hang out is also in very classic redback territory. I'll have a link to the Finder Spider Guide in the info area, and obviously Dr. Ron Atkinson is far more intelligent when it comes to spiders versus me. Now what is interesting here is that spider was there, it's actually done the bolt, it went down here and then it's progressed this way and it's literally hiding in there, it's actually in, if I put my finger in like that, it's actually in here. Oops, it's just gone to the ground. I was meant to show you the other spiders in this area, it might be time to crack open the little shop of horrors that's going on in here. Okay. Okay, yes, uh, there's a fair bit of web there and if I go down to the ground, well I can see, well, things that spiders have been feeding on. Now the very good thing is that I'm not seeing redback spiders, I'm seeing web that's very similar to redbacks, but I believe it's the, well, I'm, let's just call it cement spider, that's what I call it. I believe there's a spider here. The problem with uh, these dark tubs is it's very hard to see a dark coloured spider. Okay, what's that thing there? Ooh, what do you reckon? Oh, okay, it's another one of those uh, cement spiders, grey widows, whatever you want to call it. Interesting. In fact, that one doesn't seem to be in too good of health. Let's see if we can take a closer look at this one. Okay, that is definitely not a redback spider, but what I find very, very interesting is where these styles of widow spiders hang out, the redback spiders can't be seen. Hmm. If I keep searching, what do you think I'll find? More of these spiders or will I find any redbacks? I've got a sneaky suspicion I'm not going to find any redbacks at all. There's a stack of the messy web there. I think maybe the one thing I will say is, uh, yes, it's messy, but it, it doesn't seem as controlled and, and how would I say it, um, tight as what a redback would do. It's a little bit looser. Let's see if that cricket's going to entice something. Come on, cricket. Play for me, please. Play. I'm not surprised the cricket has gone on strike again, and uh, really when I look under here, I can see the web quite clearly. It's going to probably be very hard to see uh, through the video. It's all through here. I'm just putting my, my finger through it there, and wow, it's just like redback in, in a sense. Um, but it's, I know redback web is actually very, very strong, and it's one thing about this web is in no way is it as tough to get through as a redback's web and I've dealt with lots of redback web okay this is very sort of um, 
well, very flossy. I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, but it sets up just like Redback because it comes all the way down to the ground and there's like all these little traps set up along the ground here for whatever's crawling along here. There may have only been a couple of spiders set up in this zone. I may have already found them, but I tell you what, I haven't found a Redback, which is great to see. As I expected, the cricket's still on strike. Look at it there, doing absolutely zero. This is the other side of the table and there's an area here, like when you see the way the lines are set up, it's just like Redback. Let me show you. And just bringing the camera down really slowly here, look at those drop down lines there. It's one of these things you really need to see the spider to identify what's going on there because that's exactly what you'd see a Redback spider do. The one thing I didn't see uh, in looking at that spider is one of the egg sacs. They are... Well, sort of like a Redback's egg sac, except they've got spikes on it. And I have seen that. Uh, one developed in the spider tank, and then I had people on YouTube telling me the way that type of widow spider develops its egg sac, and they're actually totally correct. I'm, I'm, love, I'm glad I've got people who watch my stuff and know what they're looking at, because there are times when I uh, really struggle uh, to name that spider, and I'm sure people say, It's not a cement, cement spider, it's not a great widow, it's a, you know, blah blah spider. As I've said many times, I'm not a spider expert, I'm not an entomologist, I haven't gone through university and done my six year course, as people would do. Uh, but the one thing I'm not going to do here, is I'm not going to spray, I'm just going to tidy up, because I think I need to promote that style of spider, if it looks like it's keeping the redback spiders at bay. I'm sure you're going to agree with me. Oops, I better say Mr. or Mr. Cricket, and um, I've actually got a little uh, place for this cricket to go and I should tidy up the web that's here as well. Oh, this is Bindi the Redback Spider's home. I think Bindi might be a little bit hungry. There's a big cockle roach there. Let me just knock that down. Get down, down, down. I can see Bindi, she's just hanging out underneath the metal structure there. Now if I'm very careful here, I can pull out this metal structure and if I grab it on this side here, away from where Bindi is residing, I can bring it up and bring it out. We can have a very careful look at Bindi and what she's been up to, eh? What do you reckon? Plonk it down there. Okay, can be up close and very personal with Bindi. Isn't she a beauty? I'm a bit curious to see if Bindi wants a feed and if I move this in here like this, it's going to put the cricket into Bindi's web. Yeah. It might be the impossible task. Uh, Bindi is there and if I drag the camera down, I guess it's down there. Mr. or Mrs. Cricket. At the moment, Bindi's staying nice and still and just trying to work out what's going on. And the cricket is also staying nice and still. Oh, moves like that could be fatal. And Bindi has swung around. You can see the vibrations happening in the web there. So she's starting to get very alert about what's going on. Remembering this redback spider is the last surviving redback spider that was in this spider tank. Uh, and there were many, many hundreds, if not maybe thousands. Uh, that came before her, but she's a survivor, a curious survivor indeed. I'm thinking Bindi's actually starting to become very aware of what's going on. This could get very interesting. It's actually exciting watching this without looking through glass. It's right in front of me, and this section of the spider tank was designed to be pulled out. And it's actually a wonderful thing to be able to pull out and see the spider without looking through the glass. What tends to happen is the redback will come down and put web around to control the critter, then it will come down to do some bites. And then it tends to wait until the bites take effect. Another thing I noticed about Bindi is, man, she is growing fast. She's a lot bigger than when I last saw her. Mind you, she had a feed of two beetles and it was a few days before that she had a cricket. So she's a big eater. That cricket keeps moving. Oh boy, oh boy, it's sending signals to Bindi, I am sure. Sometimes this happens very fast, other times it takes forever. If the cricket keeps moving like that, it might not take very long at all. Okay, Bindi's moved down a bit, and the cricket's still wriggling. Ooh, what's she gonna do? She's exciting me. She hasn't touched the cricket yet, but she's, um, she looks excited. Oh, crikey, she's getting close. Um, yeah, she's probably a bit spooked out because it's uh, daylight. And they are nocturnal little critters. Okay, she's moving around. She's, just, she's actually gone, well, away from the cricket in a sense. She looks like she's doing web maintenance. In fact, she's really on a wander here. She's got me a little bit worried. Where are you going, Bindi? 
Yeah, she's uh, she's moved to the side there, and the cricket is still moving, which is not the right thing to do if you're in a spider web. Yeah, Bindi's getting lots and lots of signals, I can tell you. There's times there when I think she's going to do something quite amazing, and then she just sort of has a bit of a sleep. So the way she's using those front legs, she's putting them, putting them out there, and she's going to she's spotting some web there. Okay, she's doing more webby things there. Maybe a spider expert can explain that to me. Someone like Winter Knight, I think he knows what he's looking at versus me. When you see her in silhouette against that LED torch there, you just see how fine and refined her legs are. Very different when you see them as a silhouette, isn't it? Quite menacing. I don't think she's going to feed for us. It goes back to that old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. And I think that's going to be the case with Bindi here. It's not the fact the cricket's not moving, it's just for the fact that Bindi doesn't seem to want to feed at the moment. I should probably give up while I'm ahead there. Uh, I could spend hours trying to wait for that to happen, and I will get Bindi back into her lovely home. Now the trick here is I've got to pick this up in a spot where Bindi isn't because she can move fast if she wants to but although I think she's more scared of me than I am of her I think over here is safe. I've also got to get the feet orientation correct to match up with the spots uh, down into the spider tank there. Okay, I think I've got that. Uh, if I come in and grab it here Okay, and Bindi's hopefully going to carry with me and I do this and I twist it around like this very gently Okay, and just very, very carefully plonk it back uh, where it belongs. And always being very careful where I'm putting my hand in there because, well, uh, Bindi, she's a biter. Uh, but I do hope uh, that she's got a wonderful home in there and she regards me as a friend. I just noticed she very quickly moved up to a little home underneath the metal there. The redback spider would almost make the perfect pet if they weren't so dangerous and deadly. That's the problem with that style of spider. Okay, so don't don't think they're easy to keep. I will get the cricket into the um, the spider thing because we don't want to deny Bindi a meal, and I'll just release a cricket in there somewhere. Okay, and it can do what it wants to do. I'll be quite honest here. I don't think the cricket's going to last too long uh, in this spider tank because I know what it's up against. I'm just noticing the crickets going in there for a feed on that there, and it's basically fungus-covered fruit. And many people pinpointed the fungus as being the thing that basically had done a lot of the damage to the spider empire, yet Bindi seemed to have survived. And I find that very curious. Possibly Bindi has picked up a skill set that the other spiders couldn't key into. It could be a variation of evolution here. I'd hate to think I've made a super spider. I'm sure a spider expert will explain it to me. I'll just get Bindi's lid back on a home. My crikey Charlie, I hope we learnt something in this video. Uh, finding those grey widow spiders, cement spiders, very interesting indeed. Seeing Bindi out of a tank was also lovely to see. Uh, seeing that she wasn't feeding was not so lovely, but hey, she can decide when she wants to feed. And I was going to speak about another problem that I've had at my house, but maybe that's best left for an independent video because I think this video has already got too long for SillyTube.